Hey everyone and welcome back to another mining chamber video. In today's video we are going to go over Hive OS step by step. This video will be divided into multiple sections. So first we will give a little overview of what Hive OS is and our opinion on the pros and cons of using it. And then we will go over creating an account, flashing Hive OS on a storage device for your mining rig. And then after that we will cover most of the important functionality that you need to know when using Hive OS. Now let's get started right after the intro. HiveOS is a Linux based operating system made for miners so instead of having to install Windows 10 on your storage device you can just flash it on with HiveOS and then you'll be able to control your rig through their web application. HiveOS does come with a cost that varies based on how many rigs you will be running on your account. The pricing structure can be easily misunderstood so I will try to clarify it as much as possible. So HiveOS has three different plans. One of them is for enterprise which we don't need to focus on unless you're running a huge mining farm and then the other two are are basically identical for people that are planning to mine on pools other than Hive On. So the cost would be around $3 per rig if you're mining on any other pool than Hive On and then you'll always have one rig for free. So whether you have four, five or eight rigs on your account, you will be paying the same exact amount which is $3 per rig a month if you're mining to a different pool than Hive On. So now if you're mining to Hive On itself and you have four rigs or less, your account will be free and you won't be charged anything. But if you do mine with more than four rigs, then you'll be charged a 3% fee from their pool. Hopefully that clarified it a little bit. If you think we misunderstood something as well, please let us know in the comments below. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of Hive OS based on our opinion, and then we can get started with the tutorial. Now for the pros on Hive OS based on our opinion, I do think it's very user friendly and easy to set up. They made the process very simple through the resources they provide and it's also great with managing multiple rigs or large scale farms as well as running 8 or more GPU rigs without any issues. Usually these types of rigs are hard to stabilize in Windows 10 but with a Linux based operating system it is fairly easy and using a Linux based mining operating system is also great for avoiding the risk of overclock resetting which could happen pretty often in windows if you crash and get a blue screen and then finally the good amount of additional resources from their blog youtube as well as their discord server now as for the cons the first thing is that the pricing can be pretty costly and that you can only get free rigs if you're mining directly to hive on pool for the initial plan other than the first rig that you get for free and the second thing is transparency transparency with platforms like this can always be taken for granted i'm not saying that they're doing anything behind our back it's just that you can never take transparency for granted with these and you never know what's happening on the other side of the curtains and then another con is that if someone does get access to your hive os account they can jeopardize your profits by changing the wallet address so make sure that you properly secure your account and activate two-factor authentication and the final thing is that hash rates do seem lower on hive os i'm not sure if it's just a personal issue but when i use the same exact overclocks in windows 10 system for example the rx 57 100 XTs, I would be able to get 55.5 mega hash on Windows 10, while on Hive OS I would get around 53.5 with the same exact settings and same exact setup. So that could just be the minor problem, but it's hard to really tell since it does happen to almost all of the cards. So now that we have the pros and cons covered, we can move on to setting up Hive OS and then we will go over some possible issues that you can run into and how to troubleshoot them. Okay guys, so the first step of the tutorial is to first make an account with Hive OS. So we will have an affiliate link in the descriptions below that you guys can use to support the channel or you can go to hiveos.farm which will take you to a page like this and then you just need to click start for free and after that you will see a form you can just put in your information so an email and a username as well as a password and then after that we will also provide a promo code for you guys to use. So first fill in the information and then after you fill in the information you can click on have a promo code and then enter MC2020 which will fill your balance with $10 when you sign up. And that $10 can be used to pay for your mining rigs while they're mining on Hive OS. So now after you register you will see that it will prompt you to do a two-factor authentication. I really recommend signing up for the two-factor authentication to secure your account. Just like we mentioned, you don't want anyone malicious to get access to your account and that is a great way to avoid that as much as possible. But since we're using a dummy account, we're just going to skip that step. 
and then finally it will take you to your dashboard which will look something like this so you'll see multiple different options the main thing you'll see on the screen is your farm and your farm is basically just a group of miners that you keep in one collection so you can have multiple farms so say for example you have a couple of mining rigs running at your home and then a couple of other mining rigs running in a different place you can just separate them that way or you can keep them all together whichever is more comfortable for you it won't really make any difference with your payments or anything like that you'll still have to pay if you have for example three rigs in farm one and then two rigs in farm two you'll still have a total of five rigs under your account and you'll be paying according to that so now the first step we want to do is we want to create a worker in the farm so we're just going to use the default farm that's made for us and then we're going to go through the process of creating a worker and show you guys all the information you need to know when you're making your first worker with HiveOS. Alright everyone, so the first thing you will see when you're making your first worker is a box like this. So we're going to be selecting the GPU for now since we're doing this for a GPU. And then before we fill in this information, let me just give you a background on the rig we're doing this for. So the rig consists of three RX 580s, one 5600 XT, and three GTX 1660 Ti's. So it is a mix between AMD, Nvidia, and two different types of AMD cards. So that would give you an idea of how simple it is to do multiple different type of cards in one rig with HiveOS. And the process for AMD and Nvidia is basically exactly the same. So for the worker name, we're just going to name it Mixed Rig since this is what the rig is. You guys can name it whatever you want of course and then for the password we're just going to generate a password you don't need to worry about saving this since they will give you a config file that has it in it and then for the tags this is up to your preference as well there is an option to have it automatically generate tags so the tags will be like amd nvidia and then it will tell you what cards in there as well but the way i like to do it is just i make my own tags and then for amd i would do them red for nvidia i would do it green and then since we have these three different cards in there i will just put them all in so i made these tags previously that's why they're loaded in the system but you won't have any of these and you can easily just add them by just typing in whatever letters you want to add and then just pick the color and then add the tag so now after having the tag for the description you guys can put whatever you want so for example bedroom mining rig or whatever description you have on the mining rig and then after that once you hit add you'll see that you'll get a little something like this so you'll have your farm hash and then you'll have your rig ID and a rig password and then you will also have your rig.config file. So the first thing to do is go ahead and download this rig config file and after you download it just save it somewhere for example in your downloads folder and then after you download it to your downloads folder the next step will be installing HiveOS to your computer and then flashing HiveOS on either a USB or an SSD. So when you guys click on the link to download HiveOS, they will take you to a page like this. You can also access this page by going to hiveos.farm slash install. And then you'll see there's multiple different images here. So the first thing you want to look at is the GPU section. In the GPU section, there will be a stable image, which is the main one right here. And then there will be a beta image, which is usually good for like new cards. And then there will be an AMD Vega image. So if you have Vega 56 or 64 cards, then this is the image you want to use. And the beta image used to be good for 5600 XTs, but now they added support to these cards on the stable version as well. So if you have 5700 XTs or 5600 XTs or any older card, I would recommend using the stable version. But for example, if you're using the RTX 3060 Ti's or 3080's, 3070's, and you're having troubles with the stable version, then I would recommend trying the beta image and see if that works for you. So now that we got that out of the way, the first thing you want to do is you can go ahead and download the zip or the torrent. So for now we're doing the zip and you guys can see here we already installed it here. So we have the entire zip installed. It does take a while to install. It's about three gigabytes. And then when you extract it, it's about seven gigabytes. So go ahead and install it and then extract it. And then we can get into flashing it on the SSD. All right, so now that you have it installed, you have two options here. You can flash your HiveOS on a USB stick or you can flash it on your SSD drive. I honestly recommend using an SSD. There have been a lot of scenarios where a lot of people get many issues with using USBs and they are not very stable. So you can do it on a USB stick if you don't have an SSD on you now, 
but I would recommend down the line for more stability to flash it on an SSD. So now for flashing it on the SSD, you guys will need this little adapter that connects to your computer. So it's a USB to SATA, and then you'll be able to plug in your SSD and flash it through your main computer. You can also plug it internally, but then there's not many softwares that can flash it for you that way. So for example, if you're trying to use Rufus or Etcher, most likely they won't detect your internal SSD storage. They will think it's part of your system. But you guys can try whatever works for you as long as you get your SSD flashed with the HiveOS image that you installed. Now, if your rig currently has a Windows 10 image and you're using a different SSD and you guys are planning on plugging two different SSDs into your mining rig, that can be completely fine. So you'll have an SSD for Windows and an SSD for HiveOS if you're just playing around and testing them. But just make sure that you go to your BIOS options and set your boot priority to boot through the SSD with HiveOS before the one with Windows. So if you're troubleshooting down the line, you don't accidentally reboot the rig and then it goes to Windows. Now, after you finish flashing Hive OS on your SSD, your SSD will look something like this. So if you don't see Hive mounted on your computer, you just need to unplug and plug back in the adapter that you have. And then you'll see it pop up here. So you want to go ahead and drag that rig.config file that you installed when you first made your worker. And then you want to drag that inside of your Hive drive. So after you have that in there, you can go ahead and just get rid of the rig config example. You don't need to get rid of it. I just like to get rid of it. And then after that, you can go ahead and unplug that SSD and plug it into your mining rig and boot your mining rig. So now that I plugged the drive that has the Hive installation on it into the rig, you're not going to be able to see it pop up here yet until it gets an internet connection. So there are two methods for this. The first one is making sure that you have ethernet plugged into the rig. And then the second one will be setting up your Wi-Fi connection, which you can do it through the SSD drive itself. You will find in your network folder, there is a file named Wi-Fi. So you just want to open that up and then put in your SSID for your network and then your password. And after that, it will automatically connect to the network if you have a Wi-Fi adapter connected to your rig. And as you notice, we don't show you any type of screen on the mining rig since you don't really need any type of monitor when you're running on Hive OS because everything you'll be controlling is going to be on the web app itself. So it is very unnecessary to put any type of monitor on those rigs and use additional power for no reason. Unless of course, later on, if you run into any troubles or your rig is for some reason not booting up, even though you have ethernet connected and you're still not seeing it here, then it is worth checking what's going on on the rig itself. So maybe you have your bio settings not accepting the USB that you plugged into it or anything like that. That's where you need a monitor to troubleshoot and look through what's going on. So now in this video, we are going to use the Ethernet method. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug the Ethernet into the rig and then you guys will be able to see it pop up in the screen right here. All right. So now that I plugged in the Ethernet, you guys can see here we have the rig popped up. So if we click on it now, you will see a couple of things. First is that there is no miner that is set. And then we have no overclocks at all set to this rig. So now we can go ahead and move on to the third part, which is setting up our overclocks. And then after that, we will go ahead and jump into the flight sheet and walk you through the flight sheets. So the first thing you want to do is overclocking your cards before you set a flight sheet. Because if you set a flight sheet, it will start mining right away. And then it will start mining with your stock settings, which is always not good. That will use way too much power. So now for overclocking these cards, we can see here we have the three different type of cards that we mentioned before. So you have two ways to do this. You can overclock every card individually by clicking these icons right here, which will take you to something looking like this. Or you can overclock them all through this and then after you click on this, you'll see here there's an AMD and NVIDIA. And the way it works is that if you do a number and then you do a space and you put another number, that means card 1 will get 0 and card 2 will get 100 and then card 3, etc. It'll keep going like that. So since we're using the 1660 Ti's, we are going to go ahead and put the overclocks for them right here. We still haven't covered the 1660 Ti in a GPU overview, but that will be coming soon. So now we're just going to fill in the information real quickly and then we can continue. All right, so now that I have the 1660 Ti information filled, you guys don't need, really need to worry about these values. Do it according to your GPU. So every GPU will have different overclocks. We do have a library here on miningchamber.com. You guys will be able to find multiple different cards. So when you click on it, you'll be able to find the overclocks for that specific card. And then you guys can just put them in the overclock settings for your Hive OS. And then you'll also see here that there is a tab that says other operating systems such as Hive OS, Miner, SAT, etc. If you click on it, you'll notice that in some scenarios you have to put half the value that you would put in Windows. 
So these values are based of Windows operating system. And you'll see here for memory, it's 1840 to 1860. And in Hive OS, you would be putting 930 if you're planning on doing 1860. So it's half the value because in Hive OS, it's multiplied by two. I'm not quite sure why, but it seems like it's how it is for all Radeon cards. But for Polaris cards like the RX 580, you will not have to do that. And then you'll also notice here that there is the enlargement pill for Ethereum. So that's for GTX 1080 cards. And then there's also further command line parameters and then delay before running the pill. And then all these values, you can just mess around with them until you find the perfect spot for your cards. So now we are going to go ahead and save the NVIDIA card parameters. And then that will automatically update for all NVIDIA cards on the mining rig and you'll notice here on the top left as well it will tell you that the command is applied successfully sometimes you'll get invalid or something like that that means you've put a value that's wrong or an unacceptable value so now let's move on to the AMD cards so we have the three RX 580s and the 5600 XT so we're going to overclock the 5600 XT separately first and then we can overclock the three Radeon RX 580s by themselves all right now so that we overclock the 5600 XT for the RX 580s we are going to click on all and then we're going to click on the amd tab so then here you guys can see that we have zero and then 1300 which is the 5600 xt and then two two more zeros that's referring to the other rx 580s so we are going to change the zeros based on the actual values we need and then we will be good to go okay so now i'm going to show you a couple of examples so as you can see here we put all the values for the rx 580s and then in the fan percentage we just put 50 and what that means it's going to apply to all the cards from gpu 1 to gpu 5 but if we did for example 50 60 etc then that will apply separately between every card so now we can go ahead and remove that and we can keep it as 50 and then you guys can also see here there's an amd mem tweak right into hive os overclocking so you can do the rx boost basically through here and then for the rx 5600 xt since it doesn't work with it you just don't need to put anything here and then you can just put the 20s for the rx 580s and now we can go ahead and save these settings and you guys also can make different templates and save templates so you can load them automatically as well that is completely fine and you guys can test it out and see which way is preferred for you so now that we finished overclocking we can go ahead and start working on the flight sheets which is basically just like your miner so now for the flight sheet, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and click on the flight sheet tab. And then you guys will see here to start mining, click on create flight sheets. And then before you'll do that, you first need to have a wallet. So the wallet is basically what the miner will send the money to. And I do like that about HiveOS, so you don't have to store your money on HiveOS itself. Instead, it goes directly to your wallet, which is safer in my opinion. So now for the wallet, you guys can just pick whatever type of wallet it is so since in this guide we are going to be mining ethereum we are going to go ahead and select ethereum and then here we will put the address for our ethereum wallet and then we put the wallet's name and then as well as the source so you don't need to really put like exactly where this is from these are just information for your wallet to be stored on your hive os account so you guys can put whatever information you want here it doesn't need to be accurate except of course your address make sure that your address is correct so now we are going to go ahead and fill in the information all right so now that we filled the information we're just going to talk about these two little switches here so saving it as a global wallet would just mean that you're able to use it through different farms so right now we're on mc user farm but let's say you make a different farm like a different group of miners you will be able to use that wallet there so you can just go ahead and do save it as a global. I don't see why not unless you're managing someone's farm. Then you guys can separate your different wallets. And then fetch wallet balance is basically just going to tell you how much is in your wallet. I don't think that's necessary since you can just open your wallet and check. We can go ahead and keep that unchecked. And now after you created your wallet, you'll have it saved in your wallet section. So that is good. Now we can move on to flight sheets and finish up the flight sheet setup. So the first thing is you pick the coin that you want to mine. So in this case, we're going to be mining Ethereum and then you select the wallet. So you will be putting your Ethereum in your Ethereum address. Make sure that you're doing the right address. And then there's going to be the pool. So the pool, there's multiple selections. And like we talked before in the pricing with Hivon, you can run four rigs 
for free using their own pool but in our case we have only one rig and we're just going to run it on ethermine since i've had a really good experience with ethermine so i'm just going to stick to that and then you'll see once you select a pool you'll get this selection right here so ssl will just increase your security which i recommend turning on and then you'll have to select the servers so just select the ones that are closest to you in your region in our case we're just going to use us east and us west and now we can go ahead and do apply and after that we have the pools already configured now the last thing will be the miner so there are multiple of different miners and you'll see here it says nvidia amd and cpus so that means you can mine with those type of gpus or cpu and in our case since we're using a mix of both cards we're just going to use phoenix miner it's always been great to use and it barely has any issues so once you select phoenix miner you guys can see here you can set up the miner config which means you can add different parameters for example you can add here dash amd which means it will only use amd cards for mining and then you can also add dash nvidia which means it will only use nvidia cards for mining or dash gpus one two three which will be like using gpu just one two three the first ones in your rig so this is useful if you're planning on mining two different coins so i can have the nvidia cards for example mine ethereum classic while the amd cards mine ethereum but since ethereum is the most profitable right now for all the gpus at the time of this video we're just going to leave it blank and then finally you can also see here in the version you can select what version of phoenix miner you want to run the latest is always the best so i would recommend keeping it this way and now we can go ahead and do apply changes and then we can name the flight sheet so for naming the flight sheet, you guys can name it whatever you want. It's up to your preference. But in my case, I will name it ETH slash Ethermine slash Phoenix Miner. So I know the coin that it's mining, the pool, as well as the miner itself. So now we finally finished the flight sheet. We can go ahead and do create flight sheet. So now we can see here the flight sheet is ready. And the only thing you need to do now is you want to set your mining rig on it. And to do that, you can just go back to your workers and then click on your mixed rig or whichever rig you have on there and then you guys can just click on the rocket and then it will start mining for you so now with phoenix miner it should take a couple of seconds to configure to auto optimize all these cards and then you guys will be able to see your wattage on the right side just remember all these wattage reading is not accurate the best way to actually count how much watts you're using is to get a power meter that plugs into the wall and then into your rig and then on the left side you guys can see the temperatures as well so for the Radeon RX 5600 XT, there is memory is reading as well. So this is the memory temperature. And then for the other cards, you only get the core temperature since they don't have the memory sensor. Now, generally with all these temperatures, you guys will see them change colors if it's getting too hot. So for example, the 5600 XT, if it passes 90 degrees on memory, it will start getting red. And then you'll know here that you have a hot card running. So now if we refresh the page, we're most likely going to be mining. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, awesome. So we went ahead and refreshed and then we can see here we're starting to get some numbers. So we have the 1660 Ti's at almost 31 mega hash, all of them. And then the RX 580's are still optimizing. So if I refresh again, you'll see a jump in the numbers. All right, there we go. So we have now every card other than the 5600 XT. They're all at 31 mega hash with a little bit of change. And then we can also see here the wattage increased a little bit, but again, it's not accurate. And then you can see it's total system consumption here, but it's also not accurate. And then on the right side, you can see your OS version for your Hive OS. And then you can see your NVIDIA drivers version and your OpenCL, which is your AMD drivers. And then your free RAM, CPU temperature, as well as the load average, which is how fast this rig boots and then also the specs for your system so here is the motherboard cpu and then i know we said you should use an ssd but we're here using an usb just for the sake of this video but i still recommend using an ssd so now it looks like we're mining and if we go back to our farm we can see here that the rig is on and it's mining on phoenix miner for 229 mega hash total and it's looked like it's being pretty stable so far so that is it for setting up your flight sheet guys if you have any questions please let us know in the comments below and also one more thing you guys can notice here on the top left side you guys will see your accepted shares and if there's any invalid shares you'll see them popping up here so later on in the video once we reach tips and tricks we'll show you guys how to fix up your wattage make it seem more realistic to your rig and then you'll also learn what to do if you get a lot of failed shares and things like that so now we wrapped up the flight sheets we can go ahead and talk about ssh which is basically remote connecting for hive os and how to interact with your mining rig directly 
So the first thing you want to do for remote connection is you guys want to go up here. You'll see there is something that says remote access. So this is like your little toolbar. You can shut down your rig or you can reboot it through this here. And then you can also upgrade it to a different version of Hive OS. And you can run a command and select a flight sheet. You have different multiple functionalities here that are pretty useful. And one of these functionalities is remote access. So if I go ahead and click on remote access, I want to select Hive Shell Start. What that would do is you guys will see here, it will say a Hive Shell, which will initiate. And as soon as it's done initiating, it will give me a link that I can click on. So now when the command is finished running, you guys can click on it. And then once you click on it, you'll see here there's a link that will take you to the shell. And this shell is basically a command interface to your Hive OS rig. And then here you guys can see all your different cards as well as multiple different commands that you can run on your rig. So every command has a little description next to it which is great. You guys can use this to navigate through this little terminal. And a couple of really important commands are the first one is that you can do minor which will basically take you to what the minor looks like right now which is the Phoenix minor. So you guys can see here the hash rate of all the cards as well as the accepted chairs, incorrect chairs and exactly what's going on on Phoenix Miner end. So this is great for troubleshooting a crashing card. You'll see that it goes to zero mega hash. That means the card crashed or the overclocks are not good for it. And then to exit, you just want to click on control plus A and then D. So now that we disconnected from the miner, you guys can type in help me to see that same list that we've seen in the beginning. So the second really important command is hive replace. For example, if you ever want to upgrade your existing hive to a different image, instead of having to go through the process of disconnecting your SSD, plugging it into your system and doing all that again, you can just go in and type hive replace and then that will show you a bunch of different commands. So the easiest way to do it is just do hive replace dash dash list or dash L and then they will give you multiple images. So you just select them with a number and then it will proceed to flash that image on the SSD itself, which makes it very simple and very easy to do. There is also a command to update your NVIDIA drivers, which is great for the new GPUs, the RTX 3000 series and such. And then there's also a command to detect which GPU is which, which is really awesome. So it basically spins the fans of a GPU and then like that, you'll know which GPU is this and which one is that. So it's great to troubleshoot physically which card is giving you problems. So in this video, we are not going to go through all of these commands since it will take a really long time to cover all of them. But you guys can just mess around with them. If you do think you need a video to cover it all step by step, you can let me know. I will look into making one like that. But now that we've finished this part, we can move on to the tips and tricks for troubleshooting. And then after that, we can give you guys our conclusion on Hive OS, whether it's a good option to use or you should just use Windows for mining your cryptocurrency. So for tips and troubleshooting, I thought I would be able to give a good amount of value for it, but I don't think there is much to cover since the main things are in the commands, which are very useful when you get stuck sometimes. So make sure that you use those commands wisely. And if you ever need to test your cards or anything like that, you always have those commands to do so. So now for getting more accurate wattage consumption reading, you guys need to go to your settings tab. And then once you're in your settings tab, just scroll all the way down. You guys will be able to find here multiple of different settings you can mess around with. So if you ever change how many cards in the rig, you can change them here as well. So it reflects on the web app. So if you got rid of one card and then you have it still as seven, it will always show you one card that's offline. So you'll just need to update it to six. And then like that, it will show you that all of your cards are online. And now let's go back to the wattage thing. So here you guys can see the hardware power consumption watts and then the power supply unit efficiency. So you guys can put in your power supply unit efficiency to get more accurate readings for how much you're actually using to power your rigs. But for this video, we're just going to show you how to do it with the hardware power consumption. I think that's honestly the main point. So if we scroll back up, we will see here we are drawing around 539 watts and we know that this rig off the wall draws around 840 watts. So now we're just going to add 300 as a fixed value. And then once we save this and then when we go up, we'll see here that we're about 800 140 watts for system draw and then that is accurate enough for us to know that this mining rig draws around 840 watts with all these seven cards plugged into the rig so now that you have your wattage set as close as possible you guys can also go to your farm settings and then you can also put a price for your electricity so here it says electricity price in kilowatt hour and in our case we will be using 0.10 cents so now if you guys point at your wattage consumption you guys will see here it will tell you what's your average daily cost and it's saying that it's one dollar and 92 cents for all these gpus that are connected to this rig 
and then also changing the values here this will apply to all your workers so if i do 300 here it will apply to every single worker i have connected to it i don't recommend doing it this way i recommend just doing it individually per worker so you can be as accurate as possible so this is a pretty nice way to get an idea of how much you're going to be spending on electricity so now another great thing that hive os has is the way to bios mod your cards it's very simple and easy to do through hive os so all you'll need to do is go to your cards and then in the cards section you guys will be able to see you have multiple different cards here so if i would want to buy os mod the rx 5600 xt i would click on here and then i would do download vbios so that would just save the original bios on the computer and also on hive os's storage so you'll have it stored online as well and then after that you can just manipulate the bios on your system so you can download red bios editor or whatever you want to use to manipulate it and then you just need to upload the final version of the bios to the vbios rom storage and then after you upload it here you'll be able to select the bios to flash it on the card by clicking on the three dots and then do select vbios which will then show up here and then you can select it and flash it on the card itself you can also do it to multiple cards at the same time which makes it very easy and very simple to use so you don't have to go through the struggle of doing it on windows 10. and now for another thing that helped me personally a lot is that i use a smart plug for one of my rigs on hive os since it keeps crashing and every time it crashes it doesn't start mining at all unless i shut down the rig and then turn it back on after like an hour or so it does seem like it's just having some type of hardware failure but since i couldn't get to it and replace whatever damaged part it is i can just easily shut it down through that smart plug and then turn on the smart plug again and then it would start working without any issues this is also useful in scenarios that for some reason your rig is not responding at all to your commands through the web app so shutting it down through the smart plug and then turning it back on will start it on a fresh page and then you can easily just mess around with it and get it going again. And then also another tip for rejected chairs. I do see a lot more rejected chairs on Hive OS than I would see on Windows when I had a couple of more mining rigs on Windows. So on Hive OS to get rid of the rejected chairs, just reduce a little bit on your memory. Most of the time that fixes the issue. So just tune it down. Instead of 920, you can go 910. You can even just drop a single number. So instead of 920, you can go 919 and then somehow it just fixes it. So just give that a try, mess around with it a little bit and then hopefully you have it going. So that is it for tips and troubleshooting. Shooting. now we can finally jump to the conclusion and tell you guys what i think about hive os should you use it or should you use something else i do think in general any linux based mining operating system should be a go-to for a large-scale mining farm since if you run them all on windows it will be nearly impossible to maintain everything and it will waste way too much time when you can just log into the web app and tune everything up just through the website interface without having to individually remote connect to every rig and then deal with them that way and for small scale home mining i still think it's a great option maybe you can just run one rig on it to get it for free or you can run a couple of rigs on there on Hivon pool it's always good to learn more through testing different applications and different mining softwares so this is going to be a new series that we're going to start we're going to review different operating systems different mining software one click miners and everything like that and as far as hive os so far like i mentioned it's a good option you can give it a test but i also recommend testing in windows and testing in different systems as well just to get the feel for it and then like that you can pick whichever one you like the most i hope you guys enjoyed this guide i know it came out to be very very long i thought i would be able to go through everything in 20 minutes but it seems like it was not possible so if you guys like this long type of videos please let us know in the comments below or if you want us to try to compress it more next time also let me know and then i will do that and now let's Let's talk about the giveaway so we've done a giveaway on our video from two weeks ago where we showed how to cash out your cryptocurrency mining revenue and that giveaway was spawning random wallets in a video for example this one right now that you're seeing on the screen so if you're watching this video like one day later you probably missed out on the prize these wallets are just 12 seed phrase that somebody can open and then they will get the reward in it by sending it to their own wallet before someone else does it. So I thought this was a fun idea for a giveaway but I know it's unfair for many people so I want to do something different. And thanks to you guys we're almost at 10k subscribers which is insane. 
I thought reaching 1000 subscribers in a year is crazy but you guys helped us reach almost 10,000 subscribers in a year since our video was on December 26th and I really want to thank you guys for getting us all the way here I really appreciate it and I hope you're enjoying the content if you have any requests for the upcoming year just let us know what you want to see in our content and then we'll try to make it happen so thank you guys again and if you enjoyed this video please leave a thumbs up and if you have any questions let us know in the comments below we hope you all have a wonderful day and stay tuned for the 10,000 subscribers giveaway.